Hello and welcome to C2Kids, guys. I am so glad you all decided to join us today because it is going to be a fun day. It's a special day. It's Father's Day. And like always, we're going to learn some cool things that God has in store for us, all right? So, I'm Pastor Tina, and like I said, I'm so glad you're with us in C2Kids today. Now, important announcement. We only have a couple of weeks left until we get back together in our next gen sanctuary where we used to meet in person for C2 Kids. So, mark your calendars, tell your parents. July 12th is the date that we're all gonna come back together and have our C2 Kids in person, okay? It'll look a little bit different, but we're still gonna have fun, we're still gonna worship, we're going to learn about God. All good things, right? So, today, since it's Father's Day, we're going to start off with the game. You guys ready? So, in this game, I am going to show you a picture of a famous dad. Okay? Some of them are easy. We'll see about the other ones. I think you can do it. So as soon as you see the picture of the famous dad, you yell out his name. All right, we'll see how many you get correct. Are you ready? Are you set? Then let's go. First one. Kind of an oldie. He has a daughter named pebbles. I bet your parents know if you don't. All right, who's got it? Fred Flintstone. This is Fred Flintstone, famous dad. All right, next one. Are you ready? I think this one's a little bit easier. Who got it right? Mufasa, right? From the Lion King, Simba's dad. All right, good job. Let's go to the next one. Ah! Dun, 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 dun. He's kind of a bad dad, but he's a famous dad, right? Darth Vader. All right, couple left. Here we go. Yeah, superhero dad. What's his name? Mr. Incredible. All right, we have one left. Now this is a little bit tricky, but I think you guys can get it. Just a clownfish. But who's a famous clownfish dad? Marlin from Finding Nemo. Good job, C2 kids. Hope you got some of those right. All right, so those were fake dads, right? They're not really real. But since today's Father's Day, let's talk about real dads, right? All right. So if you have a dad, then today is the perfect day to tell him how thankful you are for him. Now, if you don't have a dad, or you don't live with a dad, or you don't know who your dad is, don't you worry. As God's child, God is our heavenly father. Father is just a fancy word for dad, right? And it also is a little bit more I don't know, kind of sounds more respectful. So when we are God's child, we always have a father, okay? So we should thank God every day for all that he has done for us. So if you have a piece of paper, I want everybody, grab a piece of paper and something to write with, and we're gonna make a little list. I want you to write just a couple of things down. You can pause the video to go get it and then come back. Ready? Go. I'm paused. Go get your paper and pencil. Okay, hopefully you got it. 
All right, you want to see my list? Well, first of all, I didn't even tell you what to write yet, did I? All right, on your piece of paper, I want you to write down, or I guess you can think about it, some things that you are thankful for. Now, hopefully, there's a lot of things that you're thankful for. So just take a few seconds to write down the first thing that comes to your mind when I say, what are you thankful for? Let's pause the video. Are you writing your list? I'm paused for you again. Okay, hopefully you have your list written or you've thought of some things that you're thankful for. You wanna see my list? All right, so I just started writing, so it's not necessarily in order. All right, so it says, I am thankful for God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, all three, my family, my church, my friends, my job, my home, and the Bible. So those are just some of the things that I thought of first when I thought of what am I thankful for. So if you have your list, I'm gonna ask you some questions about that now, okay? All right, so be looking at your list and then listen to these questions. How many of those things on your list came from you? So I'm looking at my list. Oh goodness. I don't think any of these came from me. What about on your list? Did any of those things come from you? Maybe not. Okay, next question. How many of those things on your list came from your family? Like maybe your parents. I can see some of that. Like maybe your home. Um, I don't know. You guys can't drive yet, right? So if your parents drive you to church, it's like your church kind of came from your parents, maybe? I don't know. The truth is, how many things on your list really came, oops, sorry, that's backwards for you. It's the right side for me. How many of those things came from God? There's the real question. Did you guys know that James 1, 17, it's one of my favorite verses. It says, every good and perfect gift, like these are all gifts, I think, is from above, coming down from the Father of heavenly lights. That's God, who does not change like, like shifting shadows. It's kind of hard for me to say. So I believe that everything that we're thankful for Everything good in our life, every blessing comes from God, our Heavenly Father, because He loves us so much. So, your list may have some things that like cost money to buy, like your house, and maybe your parents had to work for it, right? To get that money, to buy the things, you're like, oh, well, it came from my parents. Well, really, where'd your parents come from? Think about that one. Who gave you your parents? They didn't. God, that's right. God gave you your parents. And I am so thankful for parents, aren't you? Yes, and today is Father's Day, by the way. So, I know some of you, though, may not know who your parents are, or maybe you're not even living with them, but God puts people in our lives to help take care of us. And like I said earlier, God wants to be everyone's father, and he will never let you down. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He will never turn his back on you. So today we're going to get into why is God called our father? Okay, like 
if we have parents and a dad here on earth, why do we need God as a father? It's kind of weird to think about sometimes. Well, when you ask people this, they think, oh, well, God created everything. You know, he created um, the earth and everything and the first people. So he's like the father of everything. Everything came from him. But really, there's more than that. Uh, another reason could be that Jesus called him father. And we know that Jesus is God's son, so that makes sense. But not only did just Jesus call God his father, he called him father for us to call him father too. Jesus taught us how to pray in Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 through 13. That's called the Lord's Prayer. And this is how it goes. If you don't have this memorized, this would be really good for you and your family to work on together. It goes like this. It's found in Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 through 13. It says, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. That prayer has so many important parts to it. And we're not going to get into it today. But Jesus taught us how to pray like that. Like that's how he wants us to pray. So it's pretty cool. And you can talk to your parents about that. So, so far we're talking about why God is called our father. Yes, he created everything and everyone is from him. Uh, Jesus called him Father, and he wants us to call him Father. But something really cool is found in Romans chapter 8 and Ephesians chapter 1. So grab your Bibles, and we're going to check into this a little bit further. We're going to dig deep and get to these answers, right? Because every answer in life. We can go to this book to get help. Okay? All right. So let's first read Romans chapter 8. We're going to read verses 14 through 15. So go ahead and turn there in your Bibles. We're finding out another reason why God is called a father. Romans chapter 8, verses 14 through 15. Verse 14. For all those led by God's Spirit are God's sons. Well, if we are led by God's Spirit, that means we are all God's children. And if we are God's children, what does that make him? That makes him our father. Now verse 15. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear. Instead, you received the spirit of adoption. We're going to talk about that word. Adoption. By whom we cry out, Abba, Father. So this is telling us that God has adopted us as his kids. And we call him father because of that. Now, what does it mean to be adopted? Um, let's get to it in just a second. Let's go ahead and get to Ephesians chapter 1, and then we'll talk about adoption. So now turn just a little bit further in your Bible to Ephesians to Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 through 5. It says, Blessed is the God and Father, there it is again, of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavens in Christ. For he chose us in him. 
So think of that word adoption and now chose. He chose us before the foundation of the world. What? Guys, that just said that God chose us as his children before he made the world. That is amazing. God was thinking about you before he created the whole world. Awesome. He loves us that much. Okay, let's keep going. To be holy and blameless in love before him. So this is why he created us. Verse 5. He predestined us to be adopted as sons through Jesus Christ for himself. According to the good pleasure of his will. This tells us that God wanted to create us. He wanted us as his children. He wanted us to have him as a father. And it would be pleasing to him if, if we would choose that as well. So, I'm getting back to that word adoption. Adoption requires a choice because when someone chooses to make you a part of their family through adoption, you weren't born into that family. And that's exactly what God does for us. When we're born, we're not born into God's family. We have to choose to follow after him and to be in his, in his family. It doesn't happen automatically. He chose us as his children through Jesus' death and resurrection. It's all through Jesus that we can be in God's family. So we're all born to someone, but no one gets to choose who their parents are or who their kids will be except God. And now we get that choice. And really the choice is ours. He has freely given us the gift of eternal life through his son, Jesus. But now we have to choose to accept it. When you choose God as your father, you are choosing to make Jesus the leader of your life. You're saying, I don't want to follow my ways anymore. I want to belong in God's family. I want to obey what he says. Because his ways are much better than anything I could ever do on my own. So, in closing, have you chosen to give your life to Jesus? It's a choice that everybody has to make. Either you say yes to him, you say no, or some people think that just by not saying anything, they're safe. They're like, oh, I don't want to choose either one. So I'm good. By doing that, you're actually choosing not to be in God's family. So you have two choices. Either you can accept Jesus as the leader and savior of your life or reject him. So that is the only way. If we accept his son and what he did for us, that we can be in God's family. Let's go ahead and pray. Dear God, I thank you so much for being such a loving, heavenly Father. You love us so much that even before you created the rest of the world, you thought of us. You wanted a relationship with us. You wanted us in your family. And we kind of messed it up, God. But you knew what would happen. You had a perfect plan all along to always call us back to you, to always welcome us into your family. And that was through Jesus and the sacrifice he made by dying and raising again. I thank you so much that we can be a part of your family through faith in him. And I pray if there's anyone out there who has not chosen to follow you, that they would choose the right choice. To make Jesus the leader of their life. 
I pray that you would help us all to obey you, God. You are so good and loving and want nothing but good things for us. Thank you for being an excellent example of the perfect Father for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you guys so much for joining us in C2 Kids today. And I can't wait to see you next time. And tell everybody out there, see you later.